All right, welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a good one today lined up for you. Real quick, let's go over the harmonious architecture. Harmonious, right? That's a weird word. Why are we saying harmonious on a business show? It's an acronym. It's the 10 fundamental business disciplines you need to know and master in order to scale and thrive your business. It comes from our time working with the Fortune 100, the Fortune 50, and small entrepreneurs. It works on all levels, but small businesses tend to miss it, and that's why Small business failure rates are so high, and we want to fix that on this show. So today, we're not going to talk specifically about necessarily one of the disciplines. We're actually going to dive into the weeds, and we're going to be a lot in ubiquity, which is sales and marketing. We're going to talk about how to use Shopify and Etsy and all these other things. This is going to be a fun episode, but let me bring on my guest here. Allie, welcome to the show. Hi, Brandon. I'm so excited to have you here. So give me a little bit of the overview of, of what you do in terms of Etsy and Shopify and all these fun tools that people have heard of. Yes. I'd love to know how you help. Absolutely. It kind of starts from like how I even got here. Um, and back in around 2012, before Shopify was really what it is today. Like, I don't know if you saw one of the recent MacBook commercials. Somebody, they start the ad with somebody on Shopify making their Shopify site. Then they close the Mac and then it goes all into the whooshy cool Mac like video graphics. But back in 2012, it was not so well known um, at that time. And I had a client who was getting off of Etsy and wanted their own store and Shopify was there. So that was back before like the manual was as big as it was and the capabilities were um, are where it is today. Um, I was also selling on Etsy and I dabble in there every once in a while, but um, I helped her put her brand on Shopify. And the reason why is one of the main reasons why people still want to do that today, which is the um, kind of the lock that Etsy has on your audience and the lock that Etsy has on um, remarketing marketing capabilities or and then also sometimes some of the fees that they have. Um, so that's really where it started. So I helped somebody back in 2012 on their Shopify store. That was my first Shopify client. And then um, fast forward to around um, COVID time, I was actually teaching high school web design and graphic design. And I found some time and more opportunity to actually dive into this freelance plan, which was really a 10 year plan after teaching, but it kind of got compressed down to the right, right time. And I was like, okay, I can take on some social media clients. And I found that the clients that I were getting were retail or they were selling things online. And lo and behold, you know, Shopify was still what predominantly they were using. Um, so I went from a ton of social media management to primarily helping six and seven figure or people tipping into their first seven figures with done for you marketing services. So that looks like their Shopify sites, but also like what does their email marketing look like ads and their traffic. So, um, I mentioned that I was a teacher at the time. And so I was teaching for six and a half years, but I actually started in a graphic design program in when I was in high school. Um, so I was in graphic design. My first like internship was marketing. So I've been doing like some form of graphics and communication and all the internet things and pixels um, since then. And my parents were also uh, teachers. So they were career education teachers. And so it's all been very like, full circle because now I actually have students who are learning either for themselves or they are a service provider building a business or they have a Shopify store. So it's all been very full circle. And that's kind of like how I got to this very moment right here today. <laughs> that's so amazing. I love the backstory and I love how you, you got into this line of work and what you're doing now. Let me ask you the most important question though. You said started in 2012. Did you buy Shopify stock in 2012? I did not know. Was that a mistake? <laughs> that was probably a mistake. I, I saw a chart one time with like, um, if you bought Shopify stock within like the first three years that it went public and you just held it until now, it would have, I think it went up by like 26,000%. So oh, only <laughs> you know, only 26,000%. I feel like we wouldn't be talking if you had uh, any stock. Yeah, yeah. Now, but... <laughs> no, I bought tons of it, tons of it. Um, no, at the time I was probably spending whatever I should have been spending on stock at like Michael's and like getting like product, uh, paper and ribbons for the stuff I was selling on Etsy. Also, I was in DC at the time and I was like, I can either stay in DC and like live in a teeny tiny apartment and be a graphic designer or come back to Orlando. And that's when I got a teaching job. So none of those things really set me up for spending on the stock market. Um, but the Clavio going public has me eyeing that. So. 
Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Learned, right? Lesson learned. Yes. Good point. Awesome. All right. So then let's let's dive in a little bit. I, I already lied to the listener, so I apologize. I said we were going to talk a lot about ubiquity. Uh, Ali mentioned a number of things. We're we're obviously talking about business strategy here. And would you look at that? We have an acronym and an architecture to fit everything in. So you mentioned um, there's obviously a lot of different parts of operating a business and operating one on Shopify, leveraging Shopify as a tool within ubiquity specifically. But what's how do you kind of help people identify? You touched on Etsy owning your audience and having fees versus really being a standalone business on Shopify. How do you help people navigate that transition? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I have an acronym too, and it's Ooh, or it. it's ORS, um, like ORS, like maybe going swimming up a river um, or paddling up a river. But so optimization, attraction, remarketing and scaling. Um, and so if you're coming off of Etsy, there's a good chance that you have some success selling your products. Um, and so one of the main questions I get asked is like, what's the difference? Like, why should I be on Shopify? Another really popular question is I started a Shopify, but it's not doing as good as my Etsy. And so let me dive into that. So yes, when you're on Etsy, part of their terms are that like, you don't, you can't like collect those email addresses and do anything with them or, and the traffic stays on Etsy. They're their own platform. It's circular, like um, while they have ads and they rank really well on Pinterest, if you have an Etsy store that you're putting up, like that is all true. But um, when you have a Shopify store, you have your own domain, you're in charge of your marketing, your traffic um, and all of that. Whereas Etsy is essentially as um, good of a search engine platform, but it's only searching its own audience and its own shops and stores. Whereas when you're on Shopify, you're in charge of that part of the or system, which is the attracting audience and remarketing. So in Etsy, um, one of the challenges that um, gets me is that you can't, you don't really have an email list. You don't have remarketing capabilities like by running ads or um, serving clients with emails or letting people know in your own unique way, hey, we have a coupon, we have a promotion. So everything's just closed in Etsy. Um, that does not mean you can't take advantage of your marketing opportunities there. But when you build on Shopify, now you're creating your own story, own path, own mission in remarketing and attracting customers. Um, I will say that the biggest misnomer that I see with Shopify is when you start a Shopify, well, it's not doing good. Um, it's because you you have an issue in ORS, whether your uh, website is not a high converting website or um, you are not getting enough traffic to even really know if your data is telling you the truth. Um, so that's kind of how I, I explain like getting off of Etsy and getting onto Shopify, what you really need to know. Yeah, that's that's amazing advice. And it's important to look at all of those things too. And now we're navigating more towards the R in harmonious risk and defense. When you're leveraging somebody else's audience traffic platform, these are things that you have to consider regardless of Shopify versus Etsy. This is, this is just in general. I'll give you a perfect example. I am currently locked out of LinkedIn. Guess where most of my traffic comes from? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Not a good situation to be yeah. in. So that's, that's a risk and defense conversation that you need to be aware of when you're leveraging yeah. other platforms. So um, I, I love that advice. And I love the acronym bonus points to you. I didn't know that coming in. Or, um, yep. <laughs> or row that boat, right? Yep. I love it. Um, okay. So then what, you're helping people through this, this transition, um, or maybe just starting a Shopify store. You shared an interesting stat um, offline about the percentage of traffic that gets to your website versus that actually converts. Can you share that stat? And then also talk about how you help people increase their conversion traffic? Yeah, totally. So um, speaking of risk averse, like um, that's, that's such a good point to make. I know one of my clients had an issue with Facebook and we were easily, easily able to flip to Pinterest. Um, and that is something that I usually teach is like get all your marketing set up in square so that when you have a moment that doesn't you're locked out of an account or something happens with any account, you can kind of flip when you need to. Um, but in terms of that conversion rate number, yes, a general rule of thumb would be if your online store is converting at 3%, you are golden. So why 3%? What does that mean? What's a conversion rate? So how many people come to your store divided by um, 
how many people are or how many people are purchasing when they come to your store. So in doing that math, you have 100 conversions a month. And let's just say you, you, you will have more than this if you were to work with me, but you have a 1000 visits per month, right? So that becomes your conversion rate, how many people purchased out of how many people visited your site, a super broad general rule of thumb is let's get to 3% conversion rate. Um, very different for different industries, different price points, different average order values, all of these things, but it's a good rule of thumb. Um, so what that means, and what I noticed is that we get really good at marketing to the those people who we know are ready to buy. And if you're ready to buy, we need different messaging than if we don't even know your product exists, your, your um, solution that you solve exists, or what your brand is about. Um, so generally what I teach is let's focus on that 97%. Um, of people who are not ready to purchase your products or visit your site and leave? And how can we actually leverage that 97% and start shifting the numbers a little bit more to get you more sales? Um, so some stores might be golden at 2%. Some stores might be golden at 5%. Totally depends on the numbers um, that's specific to your store. But as a rule of thumb, if we can dial up that percentage that we're communicating to that's not ready to purchase. And um, that's really that secret sauce of the remarketing capabilities of Shopify. That's awesome. So how do you how do you help your clients go through this process? Because that's that's a messaging conversation. That's a, a product conversation in some some respects. Like what yeah. are, what's the process that you go through to really optimize uh, the communication? Sure. So usually when I start, I make sure all of our marketing channels are in ship shape. So that looks like your email marketing, your meta account, your TikTok account, your Pinterest account, your Google analytics. And then if you're doing anything other than that, we will dive into that and see like why, how much effort are you putting there? So we want to get our data in place and we, we, I teach that data. This kind of data is good because it helps you understand where your customers are in the customer journey. Um, so I teach the customer journey journey. Um, and in the blueprint, that's where actually that OARS comes from. And we start with like, let's be real honest. How is your website? Um, the One of the challenges I find when people start with Shopify is they're really attracted to these themes in the theme store, which pro tip, please don't get a theme that's not in the theme store, but really attracted to the themes in the theme store because those agencies are doing a really good job at marketing so that you buy that theme. It looks gorgeous. Um, or you might buy a theme because because it looks like your product too. But the problem with that is you don't know if that website converts for you. And when you put the shell onto your site, it looks quite a bit different with your products on it. So I really teach diving into that um, and seeing what do you need to sell your products on your product pages. Um, so we dive into that. We make sure our marketing is in place, set goals for getting traffic. And then we can really look at that remarketing equation and say, well, how? what do your customers need to hear when they are first in your ecosystem? What do they need to hear when it's time to repurchase? How long until they repurchase? Um, so with the Customer Journey Blue, print we map all that out so if you haven't noticed this is like a, this channel this channel this channel this channel it's like incredibly overwhelming to get started but the oars on the customer journey blueprint really concisely shows you like step by step what do you need to do to get in place to eventually scale and a lot of times scaling looks like ads but if you have a crappy website and you run ads to it like those two things are not going to help your business. So that's what I really like helping people with is getting to that place where everything's ready. Now you can scale with all of your awesome products. Yeah. And this is obviously a conversation that only applies to Shopify users. No. Yeah. This is, right. This I was like, foundational dude. marketing <laughs> advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. This is, I, I love your approach and I can tell that you're an expert at this and you do very good work because of all the other things that you're, you're talking about and you're obviously seeing the links between all of the different oh, yeah. disciplines. You're doing this for your clients, the analytics, and, and you bring everything in to make a, a cohesive store that yep. people want to work with. If your website's not converting, like it doesn't matter if you're on Shopify selling a product, you're selling a service or Whatever. If you're not yeah. converting, it doesn't matter if you bought a four hundred dollars theme. It doesn't matter if your product's actually really awesome. It doesn't matter if your Instagram's actually really good. Um, there's definitely a sequence of events that, if we can just dial them in a little bit more, um, that small percentage. If your conversions rate at, is at like a two percent, like getting to a three percent conversion rate can increase your sales and profits quite a bit. Yeah, I love that. Now, 
I, I'll be completely honest. Um, I think you were speaking French for a lot of what you were just saying, but you do have a resource for people to learn how to do this stuff. I'm going to put your website on the screen. Um, tell me a little bit about this event that this website goes to and how you can help people grow their Shopify stores and, and increase conversions. This is magic. Like seeing my link pop up right there. That was so cool. Um, yes. So CJC is the customer journey challenge and everything I was talking about ORAS and understanding like what is even inside of the customer journey. I align optimization, attraction, remarketing, and scaling to the customer journey, which helps you understand right person, right message, right time. Like all of these opportunities we have to say to people online can be solved by understanding where in the customer journey are they and how can you apply this to your online store or really any business. But for me, it's all Shopify all the time. So yes, in the customer journey challenge in five days, you will leave with your custom customer journey blueprint, which is like a marketing strategy. It's kind I like everything that's going on in my head when we start to work with clients to help them scale. So I would love to have anybody show up for the next customer journey challenge, get your blueprint, see about all these acronyms and ways that I can help you really dial in what you need for your Shopify store. That's awesome. If you have a website that you think the conversion rates could be better, you could optimize the message, go check it out. It's it's free, but not for long. I think you're charging still. A, yeah, it's not going to be free forever, now. for sure. It's not going to be free, free forever. We've got some awesome resources inside, but just for showing up, you'll get your blueprint by the end of those five days. Like you will have it custom for you. It's like a marketing marketer in a box um, or in a spreadsheet. And then uh, you'll also get a calculator that'll help you with all these like funky percentages and really see um, the path that's ahead of you, like the potential and the success that you could have. That's awesome. I love that. And Ali uses acronyms. So she has my full support and blessing. We love acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> so go register for that. I'm going to CJC to get you your O-R-A-S. Yes. <laughs> now we're just confused. But yeah. anyway, the <laughs> website is on the screen right here. If you're listening, you're not watching, it'll be in the show notes as well. So make sure you grab that and check that out. Um, let me, let's put a bow on this and then we got to go. Allie's got places to be. She's an important lady, um, but harmonious, right? We talked about a number of different of disciplines, a number of the different letters. You was at the forefront, marketing and sales, ubiquity. Um, but she touched on a number of other ones subtly, but they were, they were there. They're present. Analyze. If your metrics are not in place, if you're measuring the wrong things, if you don't know how to tweak those metrics with your operations. I mean, this is why all the letters come into play and you really love have it. to understand them. And I love that Ali helps you do that on your Shopify store, on your website and helping you analyze the strategy behind switching platforms and growing your business. So Ali, I want to thank you so much for being here. Um, where can we follow you, follow your journey and, and see what you're doing online? Yep. So on Instagram at Ali Hassan underscore A L L E Y H A S S E N underscore um, Facebook.com slash Ali Hassan. I'll find you there. Send me a message. Awesome. Go follow Ali. Go register for her challenge. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Don't forget, wherever you are, like, follow, subscribe, all the funky buttons, just, just hit them. Come on along this journey with us. We'll teach you how to grow your business the right way so you don't pull your hair out. Thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next one.